and thank you so much for watching. My name is Katie and this is where I talk about what I am making. So since it's been so long, I will go ahead and just get into what I've been making and we will start with my knitting. I do have a finished object, the Ranunculus sweater by Midori Hirose. This is a sweater in fingering weight. I used the Quince & Co. Finch in Bird's Egg. It's a yarn that I've had for a very long time, so I actually had to go look it up again. But this is held with a lace mohair, and for that one I used Debbie Bliss Kid Silk in the colorway Silver. I really like how this turned out. It's obviously not for me. This was uh, made for my daughter, and I did that by sizing down, I believe, two needle sizes to just make um, a smaller version. It is more tight knit, so it's not quite as loose and quick as making an adult one. I mean, if you're making it in this size, it might be, but um, if you were to use this gauge for um, an adult size, it would take a lot longer. But yes, this is the second, third ranunculus I've made. You can whip these things up in no time. But yeah, I'm hoping to get one of these for myself this year. They're just a really fun knit and I would like a really lightweight and airy one for this spring, hopefully. Next up, I have my longest standing whip, which is my Caledonia coat by Crystal Seyfarth. This is also in a fingering weight yarn, and I am using the yarn that came with the kit that I purchased with this. It looks a lot different <laughs> than the last time you saw it, which is so exciting. This is knit in pieces, but you do the whole body in the round, so it makes the color work a lot more pleasant than having to knit that flat. And you can't tell very well because for a while I just did it in pattern. You can't see until up here where I started kind of making a line to show where I'm going to have to steek this. So I'm going to have to steek the whole front and the armholes, which I've never done before. So that was um, a new thing to wrap my head around. I also had to knit the facings for the front. So once this is split, you will have these really nice thick lapels. And, and to get that nice full effect, you have to knit up one side and then knit the exact same thing up to sew to the back of that. So this was not uh, the most fun part of this knit because it was just, it felt endless <laughs> knitting all of these rows, but I got through it and to have this chunk of it done is, it feels so nice. Oh, I forgot to mention, I also have, you do a rolled like band on the back. It's not actually connected on both sides. It's just sewn on one side and you knit it tightly so that it naturally rolls. That's not all, I also am almost finished with one sleeve. So you do just like you do with the body. You have to knit the underside of the band to give it that nice full effect so that the band is reversible, looks nice from both sides. And now I'm just knitting in pattern. I am finished with my increases. So yeah, I'm just trying to reach the preferred length and then I have one arm left and I believe the next step is steaming and steaking and then probably adding the rest of the bands and seaming everything up. So it's it's so close and the more that I work on it, the faster it goes. So that's that's really nice. I felt like I really stalled out on this one for a while, but now I'm making great progress and I'm just so excited to have this finished. Next up, I have another knit that is on my Make 9 and that is my April cardigan. This is a design by Petite Knit and I've made quite a bit of progress on this. I love the color of this so much. I've done the top of the body and both sleeves. All I have to do is finish the body and then put on the button band and I will be done with it. I am using Cascade Heritage sock yarn. I, I think it's a sock yarn because it's a wool and nylon blend and I'm using it in the brown colorway. And then I'm also using Drops Kid Silk Mohair for this. And I don't remember exactly what color it was because it's been a while since I've ordered it. I wanna say chocolate rings a bell for some reason, but I'm, I'm not completely sure. I'll have to look that up because 
I actually ran out of the mohair, so that's what I have to order to finish this up. I love it so much, I can't wait to pair this with so many outfits. <laughs> Next up is a fairly new cast on, and that is The Weekender Light by Andrea Mowry. And this is where I have gotten so far. And this yarn might look familiar because I frogged my sweater number eight. That one has been sitting in my works in progress forever now. And that's partly because I didn't wanna work on it. I also was not super excited for how it was turning out. And I also don't have access to that pattern anymore because it was on my old laptop that died. And I don't know if I'll be able to recover that. And I didn't really feel like purchasing it again for no reason. I would get it out, put in maybe a couple rows and just put it away because I was really discouraged by it. So I decided to frog it. Maybe I'll revisit that pattern in the future or find one that's similar to it because I really like how it looks. But yeah, it's just not something that I um, am excited to jump on right away. But back to this one, a fingering weight yarn that I got from Hobby Lobby. And you work this pattern bottom up and inside out because the front is going to have a reverse stockinette effect. And since it's a lot easier to knit than purl, uh, she has the pattern inside out, which makes it go by a lot faster and is very appreciated. There's also a fake seam effect and that is accomplished by slipping stitches every other row. This seems like this will be a really great everyday sweater. I don't have enough of those. I feel like everything I've made has either been for uh, very cold days or stuff that I would maybe dress up a bit to wear. So I'm trying to work more casual stuff into my wardrobe for sure. And I think this will be a great addition to that. That is all the knitting that I'm working on currently, and I feel like I'm most productive when I have a more complicated knit on the needles and a very easygoing one. And I have both of those right now, um, as well as a few that I need to order yarn for to hopefully finish up very soon. Getting really excited about knitting again, so that's nice. Um, next up, we will talk about what I've been cross-stitching. So I do have a finish since the last time I recorded, and it is this piece here. It is called Red Winged Blackbirds by Carriage House Samplers. So this came about because I wanted to make something for my husband's office. He is a biologist and really likes these birds. These birds are also local to us. So I just thought it would be um, something special as well as just the pattern being gorgeous. So I did this with DMC yarns on a 32 count linen. I also tea dyed it, I think. That's, I've been doing that to almost every piece of white linen or Ada that I get just because the white tends to be too stark if it's not full coverage. I also am not completely happy with the finish of this. Uh, since it was my first finish and I didn't really know what I was doing, I did try lacing it, but I've seen since that um, most people prefer to pin it first to keep it in place and I did not do that. And you can tell um, in places there is some wrinkling and also some of the letters are warped a little bit. So I'm, I am going to refinish this before I send this um, with him to actually hang up. But yeah, I'm really glad with how this turned out and uh, this was my first finish with linen and it was really fun and not um, as daunting as I thought it was going to be. It was a little more challenging, but it was a fun challenge. So yeah, I really love that one. Next up is a piece that I have not been able to share before, but I've been working on for quite some time now. It was one of the first patterns I bought. It is called the Kitchen Garden Sampler and I bought this one on Etsy. So this was actually one of my first cross-stitch projects since I've come back to cross stitching. And I bought this to make into a seed bag for my husband. He's a gardener and instead of finishing it into a frame, I wanted to make it into maybe a bag so that he can store seeds or some of his odds and ends in. I really like the idea of making these very functional and I think that would be a lot more useful and special to him. So that is a very fun one. I believe that this is 16 count Ada and the pattern calls for anchor. So I had to convert it to DMC. There do seem to be some discrepancies, but I've kind of substituted my own colors in here and there when I don't like how certain ones look together. And I've been 
okay with how it has turned out so far. I had kept it a secret for a long time, but I ended up showing him over Christmas and he really likes it as well. So I'm just going to continue on that. There is not too much left to be done of the chart. Um, it's mainly, I think a lot of it will be spent doing the back stitching, which I actually quite enjoy so far. I know a lot of people don't enjoy that, but it's, I guess, still novel to me and hopefully I continue liking it, but it's, I just think that's a really engaging part of the process that's fun. And it's so nice to see all of the pictures really pop after that's finished. So I've really been loving sewing again. I just recently finished another zero waste gather dress, uh, this time into a top. I had a little bit of trouble getting this one together. I said this time that I was really going to take my time and make sure that the fit was as near to perfect as I could get it because that's the whole point of me um, undergoing this venture and sewing. And I wanted to just make sure that I had something I was really proud of and was really comfortable enough to wear that I would wear for sure. So I picked this gorgeous blue linen from fabricstore.com. Um, it is mid-weight. I almost prefer a lighter weight for what this turned out to be. I think this would have been great for a dress maybe, but as a top, it is just a bit thick feeling. It feels fine on, but with the weight of the material and um, how easily it wrinkles, it can get to be a bit much when you're part of the way through the day wearing it. Regardless, I really love this top. I really love the color. I ended up taking it in a little bit because after I had all the gathers sewn on, it was a bit baggy and the top is made to be quite baggy, but I was not loving how it looked on me. And I felt like it just was a little too exaggerated. So I did unpick it and take a bit of length off of the sides. I'm still trying to find my perfect fit overall for this look. I have made this once before in uh, cotton and while I really love the shape, it is also just a bit too exaggerated. I know that the whole point is to reduce waste, but I still, it's a waste if it's not worn. So I think I will also try to go back and alter my other one so I can wear it because I really love the fabric and the look of that one as well. I just want it to be something that I'm more comfortable in. So right now I'm really just trying to play around with fabric weight, um, length, and the overall width and size of this project. But all of this has kind of inspired me to really get back into sewing again and really start a real plan for my spring and summer wardrobe because that is probably the most lacking thing in my closet. So I immediately got to work on my Esther dress by Vicky Sews and I did have some problems with this one. I used what was a stretchier material than I was expecting. It ended up being mostly rayon and when I was cutting out the pattern, I had some unevenness on the bodice and I already struggled with that part a lot because of the darts and the pleats. And I feel like I'm still struggling with finding the perfect size to make my garments. I'm trying to make a more conscious effort to measure myself and cut things out true to size rather than strictly follow patterns. But I kept powering through for this one to just get it together and see how I liked it. Um, it was not a bad pattern to follow, but it wasn't my favorite. I did struggle a bit. I would definitely not recommend it to a beginner and it probably wasn't a beginner pattern. I still need quite a bit of hand holding, I find, especially for new things because there's so much that I haven't made yet. I decided to put that one away and I was planning on making this in another fabric that I got, which was this linen from Joanne. And this was a lot easier to prepare. I still have sizing issues, so I'm still going to play around with it. The front sags quite low, so I think I need to take the straps in more. I also am having quite a time with these sleeves and I'm not even sure if I love them. So I'm thinking about just nixing the sleeves and making it a strapless dress. I also don't love um, buttons. It's kind of a love-hate thing because there's something really satisfying about making all the buttonholes and having them completed and sewing on all the buttons. It, it feels like an accomplishment when it's done and when it's passable, but in the process and trying to line it up correctly, I'm still struggling with that. Getting better though, this one is still going to be a work in progress as I decide how I want to take it in more. 
and just really work around with altering. I am going to have to definitely take the other one, the yellow dress apart and try to reconfigure that one as well to hopefully be a better fit overall. Now during that last trip to Joanne, I came across this really beautiful um, cream knit fabric. It had this really pretty vertical rib knit kind of lace pattern going on and I didn't know what I would use it for. I just knew that I really loved it and it wasn't long until I found a photo for inspiration that I completely loved. I do plan on making this a little more suitable for spring and summer. I do really like the long sleeves on the inspiration photo, but I am leaning towards maybe making this into the sky dress by fabricstore.com. This is another free pattern. Um, it's mainly used for woven, so I will have to get creative with how I'm going to accomplish this look. I don't know if I will have to put on a separate button band, um, how I will hem it, and because I really love the almost um, textured look around the side. It looks kind of like a Pico's trim on the dress um, or a small bobble trim. So I am wondering if I can get a yarn in a comparable color and maybe make my own. That would be really great if I could pull that off, but I'm, I'm going to see. And that kind of segues into my next one. I found another rib knit that has a really nice structure and something I've been loving are front tie tops. I really enjoy the tapered ones that I've seen in a lot of really pretty patterns online, but I'm wanting to go for a less contoured fit, um, something that I can wear over other tops or over bathing suits in the summer and I think that will be a lot easier to wear and so I will definitely be avoiding pleats if I can and I found this beautiful top for inspiration I actually chose this picture because of the color because one of the colors I want to incorporate in my spring planning this year is a vivid chartreuse I don't have anything like that in my wardrobe and I've been really gravitating towards it. I think I've been seeing it a lot. Bright greens are definitely on trend right now, but every time I see this color, I'm just immediately drawn to it. So I want to make that a priority. But the shape of this top, I also found really beautiful. So I found this rib knit at Joanne and it is a cream color, but it's mostly cotton. So I am planning on probably using fabric dye for this one and hopefully getting a chartreuse color. I want to make at least one more top like this in maybe a stiffer cotton so that it has that really nice kind of breezy feel. I like how loose and just easy to wear it looks. This also kind of spills over into my other big venture for this spring and summer, which is more crochet. So these are some of the looks that I've been really inspired by when it comes to crocheted garments. Once again, I really love how easy these outfits look to wear, as well as just looking very nice and polished almost in themselves because they are so intricate and a lot of time goes into it, obviously. I actually got a lace weight cotton to try making some squares in because I wanted something that was very flowy and not quite so structured. They didn't have the preferred hook size for how small the lace weight one is. So I just got the size B1, which is a 2.25 millimeter hook. And the size of this actually terrified me. I was so nervous to use this. And this is not even the smallest that I need to go. So for this one, I used the lace weight held double and I found a really great video tutorial that I will link to this. It is not blocked yet, obviously, but I wanted a very dainty looking granny square that would still have a decent amount of coverage. I'm obviously going to have to wear something under this, but I still wanted it to be very delicate and ornate. I'm thinking I would probably have to run some tests on these and just sew some together, block them and see how they fall and how they lay. I am planning on still getting a smaller crochet hook so that I can make one even smaller. I really want to try to achieve that very dainty look, especially for um, a button-down crochet top. I think that will be really cute. I have seen some really adorable tie front crochet tops, and I think I would also like them in 
maybe closer to this weight or even a little bigger, but I don't want to go into worsted territory for these projects personally. Something else I want to do is to add some t-shirt basics. I'm working on drafting up a personal pattern for a t-shirt for myself right now. I used um, a shirt that I already owned. It's a, a top I got from Everlane a few years back. And while I like the shape of it, I don't love the length. It's quite cropped and I don't love how it has held up. So I want some nice quality t-shirts in a fabric of my choosing. It's very hard to find your perfect t-shirt. So I have a couple of knit fabrics that I got and one of them is this really beautiful cloud pattern. I love how abstract it is and all of the colors are really gorgeous. I really wanted this in a woven because I wanted this to be either a dress or a skirt but I am okay with it being a top. So I'm currently using that t-shirt to draft out a new pattern and I'm going to test it out with this and make sure that I like it. I also got this really pretty baby blue fabric. This one I'm more leaning towards a sweatshirt because I actually have some really fun ideas for this. I'm actually planning on doing a cross stitch pattern on it if everything goes to plan. And I don't know if I like the idea of that on a t-shirt I don't, for some reason that seems like it might be a bit much, but I might just be overthinking that. Regardless, I love sweatshirts. I could wear them every day. I wear them uh, most days. It's another one that I'm very excited about and will be really special if it turns out the way that I'm hoping it will.